Hello and welcome to this Component Studio Tips and Tricks video. I'm Andrew Voigt and today I'm doing a follow-up to my video last week on previous X and previous Y. So be sure to view that video before jumping into this. I'll put a link in the description. You'll also need to be familiar with a couple other concepts that I'll be using. If you're unfamiliar with them, you can find them in the help screen under designs. Our template operators template functions, and conditionally render. And with that, we're gonna jump over to my design and I'll show you what I have cooking. This game has a lot of encounter cards in it. These encounter cards give the player three different choices. Sometimes there are only two choices. But what I wanna show you today is on the back side of the card where the results are. You see here, the card is separated into three different sections. One for result one, one for result two, and one for result three with a line separating each of those sections. The tricky parts being is that if result three doesn't exist, I don't want that line to be there. And then I would need to divide the card into two sections rather than three for result one and result two. So I'd need to make sure that the space allotted to each of those results adjust accordingly. So let's look at some other cards quick. Here we see one with two results where result one now takes up a larger area and result two stretches to the bottom of the card. Or here's an example with two very long results that both take up their whole half of their cards. In this event, note that result one is actually very short and the line scoots up to the bottom of that text. As a result, I have it set up so result two will be allowed the additional space and still end at the bottom spot, giving result three a third of the card and no more. Let me show you what's going on in my assets. Result one is pretty straightforward. The one thing I'm doing is with the height. I'm checking to see if result three exists. If it does not exist, I'm gonna allow result one to take up to half of the card. If it does exist, I'm only going to let it take up up to a third. Line one is where we start mixing it up a little bit. We're going to use the function set git to create a variable named line one y and assign it as previous y plus 10. This is going to let us use this location later to identify how long of a text box result one was. Set git creates that line one y variable and has it hold whatever number I put in this formula. In this case, it's the previous y that looks at the end of the text box in result one and 10 pixels down. We can then later call or look up that line one y variable and use it in another formula. Result two is where the most interesting thing happens. We're gonna set y to previous y, but in the height, we need to adjust that so that if there are only two results, result two can take up as much space as it needs to until it gets to the end of the card. But if there are three results, we need to set it so it leaves enough space for result three to get a third of the card. To do this, we're, we're gonna use an operator to check if result three is empty. Uh, for clarification, nil is something I put in my uh, spreadsheet to signify that that field is empty. So the field isn't blank on my spreadsheet, it has the word nil in it. So we're gonna check to see if result three has nil in it. If it does, we're gonna let result two go to the bottom of the card. But if there is a result three and there is other text in it, we have to make sure to save space for it. But we also want to take advantage of the fact that result one didn't use all of its space. So looking at the top two thirds of the card, which is the height assigned for result one and result two, then if I subtract the line one y variable from that, which is equivalent to the amount of space the result one text box took, I can make sure that my result two text box will always leave a third of the card for the result 
3 field. And then for my line 2 asset and my result 3 asset, both of them are using a conditional render function, checking if result 3 is set to nil. If it is not set to nil, Component Studio will draw it. If it is set to nil, Component Studio will not draw this step. I just wanted to show you an example with this of how you can use some of the more advanced features with each other to create truly dynamic cards within Component Studio. I'm going to click through some of my cards and just watch how much the text boxes uh, change and shift, but they always leave space for each other. Thank you for viewing this Component Studio tips and tricks video. If you have any other questions or interesting things you'd like to see in the system, uh, please leave a comment or send me a note. I'm Andrew Voigt, helping you make games to be proud of.